welcome to episode 253 of Freshly Grounded. This episode is with Sonny Bill Williams, SBW. We've had Sonny on the podcast before, as you guys know, but this time I was able to interview him um, and it was phenomenal. It was great. What an amazing human being, Allah Humberg. May Allah bless him and his family. Uh, we were, uh, we were, it was the interview was with me and Sunny, but you'll see his kids in and around as well. Uh, but it was an amazing, amazing episode. I was really happy to get this episode in. And so uh, I'm getting a FaceTime from Omar, but I'm not going to answer because we're being profesh. Uh, Sonny's book is out now guys and he t- we talk all about his book it's called You Can't Stop the Sun from Shining you can grab it on Audible and in uh, hard copy on hard copy in, in the form of hard copy uh, and the link for all of that will be in the description and we speak about the book we speak about why uh, he chose to write a book uh, and, and how and why he was so candid in the book he spoke about all of his um dark times that he went through and how then faith and family led him out of that and uh, I really urge you guys to read it it's very inspiring for any young athletes uh, any Muslims and just people yeah Uh, Sonny is an amazing amazing man and uh, I really loved meeting him and conversating with him and so uh, I hope you guys enjoy the episode Uh, one other thing that I will say is that we also played the Freshly Grounded game in this episode. The Freshly Grounded game is a game of uh, 100 conversation cards that we created specifically designed to improve conversation between you, your loved ones, uh, with friends, with family, and as you'll see here, to break the ice with a uh, stranger, you know, people that you haven't... We, this was the first time Sunny and I spoke, and so... Uh, we actually had really deep conversation uh, with the help of the, the game. So do grab that at shop.freshlygrounded.com. And lastly... If you want to support Freshly Grounded and all that we do and allow us to continue to bring on great guests and uh, great content, then do head over to patreon.com. That's patreon.com forward slash Freshly Grounded. Without any further ado, this is episode 253 with the one and only Sunny Bill Williams. Enjoy. And welcome to Freshly Grounded, the brand new podcast. Well, it's not exactly brand new anymore, is it? Welcome to Freshly Grounded, the p- podcast. That's better. Created by best friends Faisal and Sam. Huh? I welcome. I said welcome to Freshly Grounded. After that bit. Created by. After that bit. Best friends Faisal and Sam. Really? Sunny, Jazakallah khair. Thank you for joining me. Welcome. Jazakallah, brother. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Great to be here, bro. Wa alaikum wa salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. As I was saying to you kind of off air that I um, I had first kind of come across you when I was in when I was studying in Cardiff. And uh, as you know, it's a huge kind of, uh, uh, it's, it's massive on rugby and stuff. And I think at the time when I was there, you, you'd come down with the All Blacks. And uh, that's where I started understanding a bit of, rugby because the whole country was like or the whole city of cardiff was like the all blacks are here the all blacks are here and like they're staying in this hotel and we were and i'm like what's happening so then i started understanding wow and then um some of the muslim brothers would would, would tell me about there was this guy sonny bill williams and man he's such an inspiration i want to be like sonny bill. and i'm like who is this guy they tell me and you know he's done boxing and and he's in the All Blacks and like he he, he like always speaks about Islam and you know I, 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 that was kind of when I first got the feeling of people feeling or or young people who are who are uh, aware of society social norms they they involved in. Uh, sports, they're involved in entertainment, they're involved in everything that a, a normal young person is involved in, but feel very, very proud of their faith because there's somebody waving the flag of their faith and not scared of it. Obviously, now we see that a lot with Khabib, we see that with so many footballers, but it, see, it seemed to me at that time that that was like the first time someone was very unapologetically Muslim. Did you ever feel that kind of like um, responsibility or was it just normal for you? Wallahi, I'm proud to be a Muslim. Wallahi, with my whole heart. Uh, it's the best thing that's ever happened to me. Allah's blessings. I think from the journey I've been through, the, the path I've always walk, I've walked, um, you know, I've made a lot of mistakes in my life, Ruby. And uh, to be blessed with Islam, for Allah to uh, bless me with, with, um, with, with the faith which has enlightened me in so many ways, has given me 
so much happiness, so many blessings. Uh, you know, to go from, you know, there's a, a saying that only from the depths of the darkness can you reach the lightest of the lights. And I truly believe that, Habibi, because my journey I had, uh, I, I, I lived the Westerners lifestyle to the fullest. I was a young man, uh, 18, with the world at its feet. I won a competition in the NRL competition uh, for rugby league. Um, you know, I was voted in the top 13 best players in the world. I had a, went on a massive contract, uh, you know, and alhamdulillah, you know, Allah, Allah blessed me with um, okay, as an okay looking ma man. So, a very okay looking man. I, you're being very humble but, here. <laughs> but I was, you know, um, I had a lot of attention from the opposite sex. All of a sudden, as an 18 year old, I was going out, um, the athlete privileges of come, you're straight into the front of the queue, you know, and I didn't know how to, how to deal with it. I was from the outside looking in, um, I was the picture of success. But subhanAllah, after, you know, a few years of living that lifestyle, I was deeply, I was deeply, deeply sad. And I feel like the lifestyle that I was living, uh, the, the abuse, uh, that I was doing to my body, um, how I was treating women. It was eating away at my soul, Habibi. But I would wake up and the beauty of Islam, it's given me that perspective that it was my fitra. The fitra was saying, bro, you know, you know what's better. And I'd wake up in the morning and I would hate myself, Habibi. I'd feel depressed. I'd feel yeah. And subhanAllah, now... Um, you know, in that lifestyle, I say, I always say, I was chasing those manufactured highs through mm -hmm. drugs and alcohol and womanizing. Uh, but the come down of that was a disgusting feeling. Now I chase the natural highs, you know, giving my time to the less fortunate, and make sure I'm giving my zakah, um, you know, how they doing my, my, my prayers, trying to pray with my heart, not just my limbs. Um, Give, you know, giving my time to, uh, you know, and, and in giving, I've received. SubhanAllah. You know, now come down from that is empowerment. Do you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, for uh, sure. For uh, sure. So that's what I chase. Wallahi, that's what I chase. But I understand too, just like with the book that I've written, if, if, if you read it, you'll understand the beauty of that book is that I'm a work in progress. You know, I have, I have my fitness and I'm not, uh, ashamed to to show that because I believe that it's all part of the process. It's how we are as human beings. We all have struggles and demons, but the structure that Islam gives you, it, it allows you like it has allowed me to turn the wildness on its head for positivity from a daily point of view. Well, let's talk about, you mentioned the book. Uh, the book you're talking about is your autobiography, uh, You Can't Stop the Sun from Shining. And uh, I, I think that it's so important for, just like you mentioned, it kind of having access to everything that it, kind of the dunya has to offer, which is what often we chase. Somebody having access to that and then understanding or realizing, having gone through it, that it doesn't give you happiness. In fact, it increases you in kind of like depression it's so important that that's in written form because there's a lot of people in the West, in the UK, where we are, I'm sure in New Zealand and Australia and in America, where we are chasing that, but we don't know what it's like. And to hear somebody's first hand account, and then they always end up with something that you have already, which is Islam and, and Allah, which doesn't cost any money. It's so important to, 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 to read about those things and to see about those things. It reminds me of a saying that I read and it said that everybody knows that money can't buy happiness, but everybody wants to find out for themselves. It's beautiful. Well, it is beautiful. Yeah. I think, you know, one of the um, biggest things I've learned in Islam is we need to, we need to get to know the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And when I went on that journey, subhanAllah, it's been such an empower. It's through uh upskilling myself educating myself understanding and getting to know our beautiful prophets upon a it's it's just a way of life and you know what you just said that statement you said it 
when you when you get the the hadiths, it's it's one after the other, bang, 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 bang. But essentially, it is the life of a Muslim is to fight against the materialism, materialistic world that we have. It's to have a better outlook. It's to be more grateful. It's you know, and the closer I am to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, the more I feel that, bro. You know what I mean? And that's why I'm unapologetic when I make my statements about how proud I am to be a, to be a Muslim because without it, I would be nothing, Khabibi. Without it, I would be depressed and I was depressed. I went through that. Um, you know, no one can tell me how to feel. No one can tell you how to feel. But, you know, I've used, you know, in my journey, I've used the discipline uh, that I've, that I have and I've, done for over 20 years to reach a certain height on field in the gym uh, i use that now towards off the field to being a better man to being a better brother to being you know a better uh a better, essentially better muslim so and alhamdulillah islam the structure of islam has helped me thrive in that space is there an element of you wanting uh, in, in writing the book in you wanting the younger generation to learn from from your experiences so that that it is written like that well i think you know for us as muslims you know yes we're we're a part of the dunya but we we strive we need to strive to be a part of the akhirah inshallah and i'm no different and i understand that and that that's a part it's a part of, of it's a part of my dawa you know but um how I've lived my life, uh, I guess I always connect with people that are authentic, you know, especially in the sporting scene, you can come up again, you can, and I've met a lot of people that are just, it's just a facade, it's not deep, it's not authentic, so if I'm going to tell my story, I've got to be real in it, you know, there's a lot of things that I speak about in that story that I'm ashamed of and I'm really you know, and it was really uncomfortable to speak about, but I needed to be authentic, Habibi. You know, just, you know, just, you know, and with that hardship has come ease because I understand the power of the discipline um, and being authentic in what I want to achieve because when I can, you know, especially, for example, when I speak to my kids, I want them to know that they can make it, they can achieve things, not just in the sporting field but from an educational point of view as well. But I needed to be authentic about it. You know, I, you know, when I'm talking to my Iman or, or my Zay, uh, you know, study, you know, I don't want them to turn around and be like, well, you dropped out of school at 14 there. You know, what do you know about study? So Habibi, what did, what did I do? I went back to school, got a bachelor. I got a, I got a bachelor's degree just for that, wow. for that purpose. Wow. Alone. But it was all based on the discipline needed. You know what I mean? So, I think one of the core things to be a Muslim is you need the discipline. You know, kind of, you, you, we want to wake. We live in a world, Habibi, where it's all of gratification: Instagram, Facebook, this, that, snap, whatever it is. I post this. I do this. I want gratification now, 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 now. You know, we need to take lessons from the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, about having sabr, about patience, about grit, about hard work. Do you know what I mean? Like, um, and I think for me, the the beauty, it's it's so inspiring and uplifting when I see uh, fellow Muslim athletes, male and female, uh, out there flying their flag because you know the struggles they get, they go through, but you understand the the beauty of that happiness they feel and how proud they are to be Muslims because. Um, you know, you're walking that similar path. You you mentioned your kids, and Allahum Barak, I was able to very briefly meet Zaid before uh, we went on on air. And you can tell, kind of through your social media channels and stuff, that your kids have really completely changed your life. And I now understand that having kids myself, that your life does become around them, and you would do absolutely anything for their happiness, and even if they just. If they're just sick, you can't sleep at night because you're just thinking and you just your ears prop up if you hear them cough and stuff like that. And so uh, you can see that through through everything that you do, that the, the, that your kids, your family in general, 
is so important to you. And 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 now, if if a few years ago you had asked me who is Sonny Bill Williams, the first thing I would have said is an athlete. And now, if you'd asked me who is Sonny Bill Williams, the first thing that comes to mind is a family man. And I'm sure you're proud of that. Uh, but a, a question I have based on that is that you've um, very kind of famously grown up in uh, not the easiest of circumstances when you were younger and you have had some struggles. And now, alhamdulillah, you put your life in a position that in which you can provide your children with a better upbringing than, than, than you had had. And so I guess my question is, is how do you draw that balance is always a question I have on my mind is how do you draw that balance of ensuring that your children are always happy and provided for because as a man you just want to give them everything that they want but then also making them like you said value everything because they might not go through the hardships that you had gone through I have the answers man it's a struggle why <laughs> it's a struggle um, but what I do know is you know, the, the biggest scenes in our life uh, uh, you know, uh, prosperity. So, you know, having a roof over our heads, being able to eat, and children, two of the biggest blessings that we can have in our life. Um, but it's two of the biggest struggles as well, you know. And if I had all the answers with my kids, man, yeah, uh, I'll, you know, I'll convey that message. But what my message, I guess, when it comes to kids is, you know, tie the camel up. You know the hadith about tying the camel up, and I try to tie my camel up, but then I leave the rest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I think that's the biggest thing that we can do because, you know, like you said, we want, we sit there and we're like, man, I want them to be the best Muslim they can be, so happy to this. And then, you know, sometimes you just got to say kalos and, and, and tie that camel up each day, try and be present each day. You know, um, I've read a lot of before. I really, before I stumbled upon Islam, I really self help books. And it's all about being present, you know, having the morning routine, having the night routine, Carlos, this, that, that, you know. And I find that, I find that the, the closer I stick uh, to the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, um, the, the more authentic I am in that space, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm striving to be present with him. And all of those, you know, type of things, um, trying to be wholesome and, and, and speak wholesomely to them. But at the same time, I understand that, you know, through the teachings of Islam that you can do all you want, but at the end of the day, it's up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know what I mean? Like, I've got four kids, humbly. Mashallah, they're beautiful kids. But four different personalities. SubhanAllah, the two, two same parents, well, I hope two same parents, but yes, two same parents, um, but four different, four different children. You know, and that's wow. the that's the blessings of 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 Allah. You know, and yeah. Subhanallah. Like sometimes you have to. That's the beauty of Islam is that you know, um, when I'm on that path and when I'm focused, you know, I don't fear anything. But I understand that there's that unknown, and you have to. Just step back and just trust your creator. You know what I mean? But you got to do your due, due diligence. And I, and I try to do that each day. Every day. I try. You know, yeah, sometimes it's, it's hard changing those nappies. Sometimes it's hard changing those nappies, but you got to do it, eh, bro? <laughs> yeah, I, know. I know exactly how that feels. Now, that's a very humbling answer. Uh, I, it, it reminds me of actually Cristiano Ronaldo's answer because he was asked the same question. He, he, he said, somebody, I think it was uh, one of the interviews here in the UK, Jonathan Ross, he said, uh, he said, you grew up in hardship and now you have children and obviously they can grow up in a much better environment. And, and so how do you do that balance? And he gave a very similar answer to you in saying that, well, I don't have the answers. I, it is what it is. And the only thing I can do is tell them that your dad worked very hard for what you guys now have and teach them that education is important. Well, you got to understand, Habibi, we're in a place now that every level of society has struggles. The most yeah. affluent places in the world have highest, highest rates of suicide, addiction, drug abuse, depression, all of that. So for me, my outlook is this: that okay, I came, I came from a low, 
income household with no wallpaper on the walls, mom and dad sleeping in the lounge room, all of that type of stuff. So that was my struggle. That was my fitness. But I, there was a lot of blessings in that too because naturally you're more grateful and more gra- you're more driven in certain aspects of your life. For my kids now, yes, they have a lot of blessings, but they still have a lot of struggles too that come with that. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? And, yeah. and, and, and for me, that's the blessings of Islam, is that you understand that no matter who you are, no matter what man you are, you can walk around and have massive biceps or, you know what I mean, you can be the most beautiful thing in the world, whatever, you're going to have struggles. You know what I mean? So Yeah. Um, that's amazing. It's an amazing that, reflection. That, that's my buzz. Oh, man. Well, that's the that's the book, uh, uh, You Can't Stop the Sun From Shining, which is out as we, as you guys are hearing this, um, as this is released, the book is out already. Uh, as we're recording this, it's out in two days' time. So I've pre-ordered it. Uh, it's available on Audible and uh, as well as kind of in physical uh, copy. So there's absolutely no excuse. And it sounds like such an inspiration where I cannot wait to get my hands on it uh, and, and, and go through it. And I'm, I'm sure I'll be like letting you know how I felt about it and how what bits inspired me and, and stuff like that. I, I, I wish I'd known this before. I just do as I'm told with the, the I think it's the publicist team and whatnot. Yeah, but if yeah, I'd yeah. known, I would have to a book right out to you, Habibi. Oh, that means a lot, man. And we'll, well, uh, like I said, I've, 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 I've pre-ordered it on Audible, so you're more than welcome to do that with a hard copy. I won't, I won't say no to it. <laughs> um, no, we'll get your details after this. Enjoy. Thank you so much, Sadi. Uh, what I wanted to do is, for the first half of the podcast, I was very eager to, to to understand kind of your motivations behind the book. But for the second half, I often think to myself when I interview someone for the first time, how do we break down the barriers and how do I uh, like how do you have like a a meaningful, fruitful conversation, right? And uh, so what we did at Freshly Grounded is we created something here called The Game. So it's a Freshly Grounded game. And the idea is, or the idea behind it was that I feel very blessed in that I get to have these conversations with amazing people like yourself where without any phones, without any distractions, we just man-to-man, you can have a conversation and you can learn so much uh, from each other. And that's kind of a lost art now. So these are kind of like 100 conversation cards that we've created. And the idea is that it improves... Uh, or, or, or improves conversation between you and your spouse or you and your friends, you and your kids. And we've kind of made it kind of friendly for like all of those environments, like for perhaps you and your parents and stuff like that. So for the rest of this episode, which we've got about 30 minutes remaining, I'm going to ask you 10 questions from the Freshly Garden game. Now, some of them uh, can be quite hard hitting. So uh, you have to get, you might have to get uh, the, the tissues out. So I don't know, how, some of them can be quite emotional, but the idea is is uh, that there's two rules to this game. And this is the rule card, hopefully. Yeah, oh, the camera's over there. So the rules say how to play, be vulnerable and don't judge. So it's a very safe, it's a very safe environment. And uh, I'm gonna pick, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick 10 questions to ask you and we'll, we'll, we'll kind of have a natter about them if that's okay with you. Are you ready? I'm Normally, nervous, ha- well, let's go. <laughs> Well, normally how we play this is, normally how we play this is that like I would have the cards and you would have the cards and so you can like do a back and forth but we'll, do you know what we'll get these cards over to you actually do you know what I may have actually sent some to you know um what's it? uh subhanallah you know Ishfaq my Lahore yes brother shout out to Ishfaq my Lahore my yeah, brother I love that dude He's a good friend of mine and so on. So I think when we launch these cards, I I think perhaps you were managed at that time. And I may have sent him a few copies, but I I I wasn't I wasn't that confident that they'd get to you. So we will send you out uh, a, a copy inshallah of the game because I think you I think you would hopefully enjoy it. Let's see. Let's find out now. Uh, yeah, all right. Question yeah, number. Bro, I love okay. the time in Manchester, Habibi. Me and my really? wife. Really? I was going to ask about it. And met some really good brothers over there. Yeah, really, really, really good. Really good. It's a strong Islamic community over there, eh, bro. Yeah, there's a very good Islamic community in Manchester. Very, very. I was actually going to ask you about. Uh, uh, I was going to start this podcast by asking you um, uh, New Zealand versus the UK. But when I did my research, as much as I hate it, it seemed like New Zealand was winning in every department. So there was no point in having the conversation. <laughs> no, I actually okay. loved it, man. Me and my wife just away from everything, nice and quiet. Uh, but I love the. Um, I was gutted that. Because when we were there, we went into lockdown, bro, for five months. You know, yeah, didn't get course. to go to the masjids, didn't get to meet a lot more brothers. So, um, but yeah, we loved our time there, Harry. 
inshallah we'll come oh, back inshallah. for another visit please do please do it would be lovely to see you in person uh, right question number one Sonny is who is your biggest cheerleader who's your biggest cheerleader <laughs> my wife she's my ride or die man oh man uh, but you know to be fair I'd say when you read the book you'll see how close my family are too so um, my siblings my mother my father and I'd say my wife my wife I often find that like when I, the, 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 the most the more successful or the most successful people that I, I interview it tends to be a theme that they attribute so much of their success you know after Allah to their wife so it was no surprise that that's how you answered that question you know subhanAllah I married my wife after four weeks, I mean, yeah, I've read that. And, uh, yeah, but uh, I've done so many interviews where that's the first thing they'll ask How could you what, marry your wife? But it's kind of from the it's, that's from a westernized way of thinking, you know, and it's how I grew up. But I had nothing to lose, I mean. yeah. You know, I took a step towards Allah, and Allah took those two, that two steps toward back towards me and blessed me with. You know, love, understanding, a beautiful relationship from that sense where, because from the Islamic ethos, it's me, she has rights over me and I have rights over her, you know, as a, as a husband and as a wife. And that's how it worked. The work started off with that mad respect. The love came and the blessings came with these kids, you know, what I mean? so unbelievable. It's, it's true, man. I, I have a very similar story in that I knew I was going to marry my wife the first time i saw her as well and uh we ended up getting married very quickly just like like you mentioned and i often do attribute inshallah if there's success in our marriage which i i i would like to say there is a lot i i would i i like to attribute that to that to the fact that it happened so fast and so there was very little room for like uh you allowing shaitan to get involved you know because it's so easy for that to happen so it's, um, it's you know, it, even that in itself is inspiring for people to know that how quickly you got married because we end up delaying these things so much especially in my culture it, it happens a lot we kind of say okay well now they've met you know next summer we'll do the nikah and it's like ah oh, the nikah takes five minutes <laughs> yeah. well you know the um, and the blessings of it is it's you know the hadith about it being half our religion it speaks volumes yeah. You know what I mean? Because it removes the shape on, it removes the struggles, it removes the fitna. Sure. So, you know, I did four weeks of uh, being chaperoned with her um, her cousin and cousin's husband. Went on, you know, numerous dates and I just remember thinking, man, I couldn't do this anymore. you got to get married, you know? <laughs> Boy, that's so crazy. We did the same thing. We, we would go to restaurants and um, we would be like sat in the restaurant and then like a few tables down, her brothers would be sat. <laughs> so like we're eating and we're talking and we're like her brothers and I'm like, oh my gosh. So, yeah, we had the exact same experience. There's man. halal problems eh, bro? <laughs> yeah, there is. It happens, man. It happens. But alhamdulillah, bro. It's... Yeah. it's uh, it's a blessing, man. I wouldn't want to have it any other way because you just see how much harm it stops you from. So, yeah, you wouldn't want it any other way. I'm very happy to hear that answer. Right, next question. It says, one of Allah's names is your protecting friend. One of Allah's names, like, translates to your protecting friend. Name a time in your life where you have felt that name in existence. Say that again, baby. One of Allah's names is your protecting friend. So like um yeah uh, I can't remember the Arabic. There. Yep. it's a name a time in your life where you felt that in existence that 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 name like where he's like being your protective friend. Um, I'd say when I first went to Europe, when I when I uh, left Sydney, I, I took off from my contract, I broke my contract, and I went overseas uh, to France, relatively unknown over there. Uh, in existence and it was such a special time for me because although there was a lot of hardships there was a there was a lot of ease and a lot of growth uh, and I feel like on field but especially off field Allah's uh, guidance and uh, blessings just showered upon me hard out bro you know so yeah I'd, I'd have to say then yeah, yeah amazing. I'd have to say then amazing Next question. I wish you read the book, bro, because you would understand these answers. You know what I mean? I know, Shallow but scene. do you know what? I, I've done my best because there's, 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 there, there's, 
people have written about the book already and so i've read what i can about it i, I know the synopsis and stuff but i will inshallah two seconds can you um put that on the silence can you see daddy's doing it sorry baby it's all right come here say assalamu alaikum this is my imani assalamu alaikum iman how are you doing so what are you, and what is it that you're watching? Uh, my Little Pony. Oh, My Little Pony. Oh, that's very nice. But your dad's doing an amazing job. Is he? Is he my good dad? Yeah. Is he, are you oh, proud yeah. of him? <laughs> oh, bless her, man. Very smiley. Interviews we've got it set up in the upstairs. Can you turn that down, baby? Turn it down. So she sneaks up here. No one's allowed up here, but you know she sneaks up here. Oh, I, I, one of my questions was actually going to be: How is your relationship different with your sons and your daughters? I don't like how uh, you know just girls and boys are different, eh? Mm. Sorry, two seconds, darling. Can you turn that down, please? We're gonna have to get this. Struggles real, bro. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, my boys just, my boys just want to play tackle and be rough and real, and the girls just want to want me to sit there and play ponies with them or Barbie doll, you know. It's fun and lot. So and I'm sure you do. I'm probably the big difference between my kids. Yeah, well, I try to, bro. I try to, bro. I try. <laughs> but you know, for me, I. I one of the big things we try and do in our household, and it's a struggle, I must admit, but we, when, when I'm on, on that straight and narrow and feeling unbelievably close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is I control my phone. I think that's the first key you know, um, for success, in, I know, in my life. Uh, you know, I'll limit it, limit it um, and, you know, I'll only go on it maybe once or twice a day uh, to check it you know and naturally bro the just you're just present with your kids you're just talking more with your wife it's yeah so anyway sorry bro carry on brother no this is this is perfect i am um, i i i actually uh i've had the same feeling actually because you start hating your phone even more so when you have kids because you're like what no, no I, and i start hating myself because i'll notice that i'm on it for 15 minutes my kids are running around and i'm thinking what, what am i doing looking at my screen when my kids are here running around and you just start like uh, hating it and then hating yourself and you think so now i just unapologetically put it away and i get a bunch of messages of people upset at me they're like Ask you questions like, bro, are you seeing this? And but you know you have to, otherwise it just takes over. I'm sure you get it a lot worse. I think in any, any person, I think any person's walk of life, if the the one that can control their phone, uh, you know, in today's society, is the one that will be a lot more successful in life. You know, 100 percent level. It reminds me of a quote that I once read from a scholar, which he said that I found that any time I indulged in food like eating whatever i wanted i would i would sin more because the effect of indulging in one desire led to indulging in more desires even though food necessarily is not haram it's kind of similar isn't it when you don't discipline yourself on your phone then that's like step one you perhaps will find it hard to discipline yourself of things that are actually not allowed and i guess you know that's it comes back to that point that we spoke about earlier in the piece about discipline Putting, you know, for me, being able to transfer that discipline I put into my sport into uh, life off you um, in regard to Islam, really discipline and in, 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 in that trying to upskill myself, learn about the Prophet Muhammad's beliefs, discipline. You know, it's really, it's really been beneficial and helpful. No, it's amazing, that, man. Thanks for doing the interview. Please. <laughs> it's all right. We don't, we don't, we, listen, we do not mind. We do not mind, honestly. It's absolutely no issue. All right. The next question is Which emotions do you tend to disguise? Which emotions do you tend to disguise? Uh, my shyness and my low self esteem. Really? I would never expect you to be shy or low self esteemed. Oh, you, yeah, well, that's the beauty of the book, Abibi. I really talk a lot about my 
self-esteem issues, um, confidence issues. And, and it's it all stems from, I guess, my childhood and, you know, me being a half cast, I never really felt like I was white enough or I never really felt like I was Polynesian enough. Always felt like I was in the middle. Um, you know, and then things that had happened to me as a child, you know, I burnt my legs when I was young. Um, uh, coming from, you know, a low income household, you know, my old man being Polynesian, always feeling like they were, weren't good enough stemming from colonization you know we had a thing in in the in new zealand called the dawn raid movement where they new zealanders the new zealand brought people from the polynesian islands base put them in put them in um new zealand to to work all the low income jobs and then went one and, and do all the crappy jobs that needed to be done and once it had finished they kicked them out of new zealand it was called the dawn raids and um you know, that was a big part of why my people, a lot of collectively my people are, have those type of issues as well. So for me, like I said, the discipline and upskilling myself from an educational point of view, um, understanding that process really helped me understand the reasons why, you know, I have these type of issues. So, um, yeah, hence the reason why I'm... I'm I'm really able to love talking about that stuff because I feel like there are a lot of my people that are uh, in that same space or walking that same path. Really. It seems like it comes from maturity as well. As, you get, as you've gotten older, it seems like you've become a bit more confident to speak about those because you know how important it is and perhaps how big your voice can be on those, on those issues. 100%, bro. 100%. And I understand to walk that talk, I need to put myself in situations and in spaces that that I'm not really comfortable in. Uh, for example, writing a book, working out, Iman, yalla, go downstairs, please, baby. You can keep talking. Ah, baby, you know how it is, bro. You wait, wait till your kids get a little bit older. Um, but oh, my two-year-old is at the really... terrible two stage, so I get it, man. He's like, but he's un- he understands how to open doors. So he's coming in the room during meetings. I'm doing meetings with him on my lap, and then he's running away, playing with his car. So I get it, man. Um. So yeah, bro. Back to back to that. Like, actually writing a, a book, doing an autobiography, and I work on TV as well. It's so uncomfortable, but the growth from that Habibi is massive. You know, so just trying to, I just try and walk that talk in that in that sense. Wow. All right. Next question. This is an interesting one. Tell me something about your father that you didn't appreciate until you became older. Tell me something about your father that you didn't appreciate until you became older. I guess how hard he was, you know, how hard he was on me and my brother from a, a sporting point of view in a sense that he, with praise, always came, um, you know, something that we could do better. You know what I mean? And I always struggled with that. You know, sometimes one of the praise, even it was, but I think... When I when I well when I got older, I understood that 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 was his struggle. You know, that was from his struggle how he grew up and how he was. That you know, you never you never want your kids or you want you know he that's what he thought was best. That um, that you know, if you praise your kids too much, you're setting them up for failure. You know, and 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 sometimes it was a little bit detrimental to my confidence. Um, but humbly. You know, alhamdulillah, me and, me and my father have a great relationship now. And, um, it stems from that. And this is my daughter is so naughty. <laughs> oh, it's, not, it's completely, don't feel bad on my, on our end, bro. It's, it's, it's no issue at all, <laughs> honestly. Iman, Iman, <laughs> you want me to get, my, see, we, we're good cop, bad cop. I'm, I'm the good cop, my wife's the... Oh, really? You want me to get your mother to come upstairs? No, no, you, please, please. You better go downstairs then, girl. No. Or sit over there. <laughs> Right, Sorry, it's, it's, a, it's all good, bro. Honestly, it's all good. Right, we're going to go to the next question. Next question is a bit more lighthearted. It's describe your ultimate cheat meal. Oh, yeah, man. Um, if French toast is really? not on there, Sonny, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to yeah. get angry. French toast? Oh, yes. Baby, come on, bro. 
homemade hamburgers, bro, or, or, okay. or burgers and chips. I'm telling oh, you, but man. you know, there's this, um, there's this uh, crew that in Sydney, they're called Smoking Arabs, and mashallah, man, okay. they do some good food. It's slow cooked brisket and 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 ribs. Uh, so you get the brisket burger and, and with chips, and then I get the ribs with crisps. Right. What's funny is Every that. Weekend, that's, that's, <laughs> well, I was gonna say that. I was gonna say what's funny is that that's a cheat meal for you, but for many people, that's a that's a lunchtime at work. To be honest, on on delivery or Uber Eats. So, how 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 is your diet uh, generally like day to day? Is it really strict? Well, you know, Habib, uh, although I've un- hung up the boot, uh, hung up my footy boot, I'm, I'm getting in the ring now for the next um, at least next three you... months. So, in oh, amazing. So, in I'll, I'll uh, be a fight over. I'll be able to have a fight. In the UK, in the next couple of months, will be a uh, couple of years, so it'll be awesome. But um, oh, so wow. yeah, generally, um, the the I'm disciplined in how I eat, but I love my food, like we all do, bro. Mm-hmm. Food's one of uh, life's great pleasures. Humble, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. so yeah, bro. You, if I get over there, we have to go for a, uh, a feed at my Lahore and have a little cheap meal, my brother. We must, we must, we will definitely. I'm going to hold you to that. Uh, right, next question. I'll see sorry, what there's. This is all about. Uh, but what, what is about? Sorry. <laughs> the French toast, Coco. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, I, I'll, I'll make you a homemade French toast because no one's going to beat my French toast. So I want to call you out my house for breakfast early in the morning with the kids running around everywhere. I'm going to make you a solid French toast and brioche bread. You're going to love it. Uh, next question okay. is. Tell me an Islamic reminder you once heard that stayed with you to this day. An Islamic reminder you once heard that stayed with you to this day. Man, and after so that, we're on the last uh, four questions. With hardship comes ease. Um, and the saying I always, I always love, um, hashtag it always alhamdulillah. Always alhamdulillah. Yeah, I see that. You're, you're, you're a hashtag man. I've noticed that, Sally. Right, we're going to do quick fire because we've got four questions still. And we've got, we're running out of time. So uh, next one is, think about someone... Okay, I'm going to say this one to the end because this one's a bit of a hard-hitting one. So let's try and go with something a bit more relaxed. Uh, fine. Do you find it easy to apologise? That's a quick answer. Do you find it easy to apologise? Yes. I think we might have to ask your wife. <laughs> nah, wallahi, um, I've always... I don't know if it's um, the empathetic heart of mine, but I've always been able to lower my pride and check my ego. So, alhamdulillah. Oh, that's amazing. That's good to hear, man. That's a that's a sign of that's a sign of strength, really, more than anything. But, you know, between the even between the brothers and the ummah, it's a it's you know, um, we can't we're in a place where we we can't even get uh, Eve correct in some uh, you know on the same buzz in different countries because he said oh we do this or do that yeah. you know so for me um that, that comes easy for me bro alhamdulillah next question is what is your favorite struggle your favorite struggle my favorite struggle my favorite struggle is i i don't know i think my answer is knowing Knowing when I'm not, when I when I'm off, when I'm not on, you know, my favorite struggle. I'll probably it would probably be say my wife when she understands something's not right with me. Sometimes I can't put my finger on her baby, but I know that I must be praying with my limbs, not the heart. You know what I mean? So wow. it's good to know I have not that faith. You know what I'm trying to say? No, I know exactly. Like, what um, you it's mean. important for exactly anyone, everyone in all walks of life to have their face. You know. Yeah, it's important to check yourself. Last uh, penultimate question. When I think of meeting Allah, I feel... Fill in the blank. When I think of meeting scared. Allah, I feel... Scared. Scared. Yeah, that tends just, to be the... Uh, yeah, bro. Just... By, by no means am I perfect and I have uh, a lot of faults. You know, inshallah, Allah sees... Sees the heart, you know, and and and, and uh, uh, striving of the heart that I that I try to um, do for all of us, I guess. Yeah, fear, fear. Fine, we're on the final questions, Sunny, and then uh, I'll, I'll I'll leave you alone. Um, think about someone in your life that's no longer here. What's one lesson they taught you? My- um, 
and this was before I was even a Muslim, subhanAllah, that it doesn't matter what skin color you are, um, you know, it doesn't matter what skin you color you are, it matters how you are as a person. Uh, and subhanAllah, like a lot of, you know, when you read the book, inshallah, you'll understand that why Islam uh, resonated with me. Because like, you know, the Prophet's um, last speech, how he says, you know, no Arab is better than a white or no black is better than a white, no white is better than a black and so forth, or no Arab, non-Arab. Um, it's all about your heart and you know your intentions, that type of buzz. I feel like, you know, my nana, who was, I guess, when we grew up, she was the linchpin in the family where, you know, everyone would go to her house and that's where we would all connect. But her simplistic outlook in life was one of that, that treat others the way you want to be treated, but she would always say that, you know, doesn't matter what color you are, Sonny. You know, it doesn't matter what color you are. It's how you are as a person. So, yeah, my name. I really miss her too. Oh, man. That's an amazing message. Thank you, bro. Uh, before uh, before we end, uh, you know, we, we did speak about the book at the beginning. And the book, like I said, it will now, as people are listening to this episode, it will be out now. You speak a lot about your struggles in the book and, uh, and, in, and in how family and Islam had kind of led you to getting that purification and, and that happiness uh, do you have a message for for younger athletes the next generation of athletes the next generation of, of, of people in general who um, who perhaps try and find happiness in the wrong places or, 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 or aren't quite sure about where to find happiness what would you say to those people Muslims and non-Muslims you know um, follow your heart be vulnerable enough to stand on your own two feet uh, and just do try and do what's right. Strive to do what's right. You know what I mean. And the empowerment you'll get from that is is beautiful. You know. Um, but yeah, just you need. And I can only speak from my uh, journey that I wish I had the strength to put that vulnerability head on and be like, man, uh, this isn't right for me. You know. I think a lot of young athletes get in that space because they're surrounded by other athletes that you know, sometimes aren't doing the right thing. So, um, you know, always follow your heart in a sense that, you know, especially if you're trying to be better and, and do good. So, um, yeah, that's true strength, you know, is saying, well, actually, I don't think that that's how I should be or what I want to be, you know. But, um, yeah, and then also be – Give yourself grace. You know, my the, the empathetic part of mine goes out to young athletes because, for example, in Australia, heaps of heaps of young players, you know, have been uh, getting in trouble and headline news for doing the wrong thing. Uh, but I always think that they're just young people in society trying to, you know, just living life, and we're all going to make mistakes. Subhanallah, Allah is the most merciful. You know, if Allah can forgive us, who are we not to forgive ourselves? You know what I mean? Thank you so much, Sonny. I, Sonny and family, uh, I really appreciate your time uh, on Freshly Grounded. I really, really appreciate it. I know you're a busy, man. Uh, thank you so much for giving us your time. And, and like I said, I, I invite you to to come and do this sometime in person. It would be lovely to see you. I know you did uh, something with our good friend John Fontaine for you uh, years back. Uh, and uh, he very kindly uh, gave us the footage uh, for, to, to, to upload on our channel. And, and uh, so it'd be lovely to have you on for, for a third time, perhaps in person, inshallah. So thank you so much for your time, Sonny. If you just stay there um, uh, while we end the podcast, then we'll, I'll kind of uh, have a little debrief of you as well. Iman, thank you so much. And Zaid as well for your, <laughs> for your appearances. And uh, with that being said, guys, this was episode 250 three of freshly grounded and, uh, i hope you guys enjoyed 253. it yeah, 253 yeah uh <laughs> go and grab uh sunny's book i'll put the audible link and the link directly for the hard copy of the book as well in the description of this video uh please do check it out and uh show your love and support to sunny thank you so much take care assalamualaikum